Namaste. My name is Vibhushit Tripathi and I welcome you to the first of the three videos of our playlist related to my selection at Baiju's for the role of an academic specialist. I will give you the link of the playlist in the description and uh, I suggest and I recommend that you go through all this, these three videos because uh, if you want to get prepared ahead of the opportunities that are coming your way you should familiarize yourself with the process now in the first video i will cover all the steps that are involved in the selection process in the second video i will cover my interview experience with the academic manager at Baijus. In the third video, I will uh, in, let you know about the importance of uh, your English fluency in getting such jobs. So let's get started. Now, the reason why you should watch this video is that first the academic coaching is going to get online more and more day by day because uh, when we had this COVID pandemic a lot of coaching institutes that could not go online simply shut down and whatever new ed techs are coming up and they will uh, have uh, the teachers uh, teach online mostly Okay, only a few teacher get to go to their studio for recorded lectures, but most teachers would be teaching online for ed techs and upcoming institutes. Even the existing great institutes would require the teachers to work from home and on through online lectures. So the process that Baiju follows for such recruitments is is is, is acting as a model to all such uh, similar employers. So, and, and also Vedantu is already following this because I got an email from Vedantu that, say, you know, that follows the very similar process uh, as that of Baiju's. So, what I can tell from my experience that um, as we go forward, more and more jobs for educators would be uh, only through online teaching and uh, when it comes to online teaching, there is no regional boundary, there is no national boundary, the entire education or coaching or again education uh, segment is going to be kind of a global uh, community where the language of communication is going to be English. So your uh, English communication skills would definitely matter. Also, if you master this process, okay, the steps involved in the selection process, how the interview is conducted and things like that, if you master that, then ahead of time, you will prepare yourself for such interviews and the chances of your getting selected becomes more, okay. Now, let me give you a brief introduction about myself. My name is Vibhusha Tripathi and I am a passionate researcher and educator in physics. I hold a master's degree in physics. I'm currently working towards uh, my PhD. I'm doing a research project in cosmology. And I have about 12 years, more than 12 years of professional experience. The first two years were with uh, MNCs. Uh, I worked with uh, Barclays as an IT advisor. I dealt with the British clients. Then I worked with Iyogi. I was a technical specialist there and I dealt with the American clients. So and yes, my, my communication skills helped me a lot in getting such jobs. Now after leaving the corporate, I even uh, entered into academia and uh, I started teaching physics uh, to students in India and abroad as well. I have taught students in UK, US, Australia, New Zealand. I have taught classes for AP Physics 1, 2 and C. I have uh, also taught students for 11th and 12th Foundation, JE, NEET. My subject has already been uh, Physics. Now, I also run my own courses and uh, classes at my own Physics blog, which is the physicist.in. I work at uh, study.com as a solution writer and um, 
so that's it about myself now the reason i why i got uh, i chose to work for byju's is something that i'll explain later but then first how i got to know about byju's specialist academic specialist recruitment right uh first i got to see the ads that byju uh, gave on social media where it described a new feature in byju as well uh instead of one they will have two teachers uh, teaching the same class one will be the primary teacher the secondary teacher will clear all the doubts and give doubt clearing sessions online so i thought that if they are adding a new feature that requires new, more teachers then they would definitely hire more teachers and uh, in a few days i saw the advertisements that uh, uh, you know from byju's where they asked people to apply for the academic specialist recruitment initially i ignored those uh, advertisements but then i thought well if it's a part time job and i can get some good money out of it and then why not why not uh, work for byju's and get some good you know uh, good influence on my cv by working with a reputed company so i started looking for uh, their links so what i did is i went or or went to byju site and looked at the career section i found these two links uh, for academic specialist one is for science and one is for math i will give you the links in the description also but uh, let's see uh, okay here this is the uh, this is how the page for science faculty application looks like so here you apply you put in your otp and then uh, follow the processes this is a full time job they have taken out the part time option but the pay is good here okay i'll discuss what i am getting from byju's uh, later in the in this video but then uh, just as a proof of my selection this is the email that i got from byju's when i the uh, got the result of my interview okay i will take you through all these emails one by one as we discuss the steps okay so well, let's go back to the presentation uh, well why did i apply for byju's academic specialist role is because see i am already working on many projects uh, apart from my own research which is my passion in order to earn some money i work in different projects i do not want to invest all my time into one particular job just to get some money so i dive, i al always believe in diversifying my um, opportunities my my earning potentials so byju's uh, actually became a good fit for my uh, plan so i thought i should if i could actually teach part time and get about 28000 a month which is what byju promised so i was interested in byju's because teaching uh, part time and uh, just 4 to 5 hours and getting a good amount of money is really great that's why i selected for byju's and the most important thing is for this job profile i don't have to travel anywhere i just uh, i can teach from my home using broadband and my own studio settings the recruitment process has uh, seven steps okay uh, first thing is you need to apply online i showed you the link where you can go and apply uh, i will give you two links one for science one for math and then uh, once you apply in a day or two you will receive an email with the link to submit a demo lecture let me show you that i got this one it says uh, yeah they are looking for rock star teachers from grade 4 to 10 but if your experience is like mine like uh, graduate or masters you will be getting classes of 9th and 10th okay and for me it is again teaching 9th and 10th becomes a uh, uh, easy job for me because i don't have to prepare much uh, teaching je and neat although is not a huge task for me but then uh, you will have to focus mostly on the problems and there could be different types of problems and you can have to prepare for them for sure okay so uh, grade 9th and 10th was you know as an easy option for me so of course every job will have its own challenges and you shall have to stand up to the challenges but then comparatively teaching uh, 9th and 10th grade especially teaching science is 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 a very um smooth experience okay now then the they will ask you to submit a video okay they'll give you the link at the bottom where here and they'll ask you to submit a video and that video needs to be up to within 5 to 7 minutes not not very short not very long keep it with uh, within 7 minutes 
okay and uh, the topic would be uh, for math uh, they will give some topics to me these are the topics that were given for math but i was interested in science i also wanted to apply for math but i didn't have much time so i only chose uh, for science now i made a video on structure of an atom uh, for the demo but then in the interview i gave the demo on gravitation uh, when you make the video follow the guidelines uh, the explanation of the concept should be really uh, easy should not be very tough the demo has to be completely in english no no using hindi or any regional language ensure that you are visible in the video that means if you are shooting it in a camera then or or phone camera then you should be there of course teaching on the whiteboard but i made the demo video using a presentation on my laptop using display capture so i had to make sure that the webcam uh, was all, all you know already working so you should be there in the video they they should be able to know how you are teaching your expressions they should be able to see your expressions also now the video should be mp4 format and uh, it should not be very large it says that it the max size is 50 mb but then uh, i made it up to 150 mb so if it is going beyond 50 mb then fine as long as it is within 200 megs okay so keep it like 150 megs or something like that it will be okay um, the most important thing is your video should be submitted within 48 hours of receiving this email right so that is what i got now let's uh, go to the slide now once do you submit the video then you will receive step 4 an email confirming uh, the shortlisting of your demo video and then there will be an upcoming academic interview and this takes about 20 days okay so in 20 days i again got the videos like uh, okay first when i submitted that the video demo video i got this email that they they only asked for 7 days to review my submission but in fact they took about 20 days to set up an interview and in, to inform me that my video has been uh, selected so this was the uh, you know i got a call from some hr at byju's and he told me that there is a meeting that i need to attend to it will be an interview with uh, some academic manager he set this meeting on uh, zoom and uh, again he gave me uh, sent, sent he sent me another email uh, where the details of the interview process was mentioned here so in the interview he said that uh, Uh, this interview round would need would require that i give another demo for 5 minutes on any chosen topic uh, the list of to available topics are here for math and science and it should be again up to the 10th standard not any uh, tougher and then uh, the interview would not allow any ppt or screen sharing so if you can teach on a whiteboard again that's fine but i couldn't because uh, my headphone is doesn't have that long oh, wire so i had to teach on my laptop but then as screen sharing was not allowed what i did is i made it a story i just explained it facially okay i didn't use any other uh, you know this screen sharing or anything like that so i didn't even uh, write any equations i made this uh, i i gave the demo on gravitation that was the topic i was already working with topper i forgot to mention that i also was selected for topper i worked with them for a few days but i didn't uh, uh, i couldn't actually continue with the full time job with topper so i left but then as i was working with topper then so i was already working on gravitation so i gave the demo on gravitation and it was like a story i made it like a story uh, for 5 minutes but then the the interviewer uh, she couldn't realize when the 5 minutes were, were over so at about 7th minute uh, she realized that it is getting longer so she stopped me there anyways so they uh, you can choose to give the demo on math or science choose a topic and give it then there will be a, once your demo is over there will be a, a q and a round i'll i'll uh, as i said the second video of this playlist is based on my interview so all the details of the interview will be given there but for now the q and a round will be there it will uh, the q and a round alone would be around 20 minutes so you will be asked about 10 questions if you're choosing science then uh, you will be asked uh, you will be have to you will have to choose two topics okay uh, two subjects either physics or chemistry or physics or bio or chem or bio so 
in that case you will have uh, five questions from each subject but in maths it will be uh, 10 questions from all over mathematics so now let's <clears throat> go back to the slide and once the interview is over the um, you will have your results okay uh, like you will have your results within uh, within three weeks for me it took uh, just nine days I got my result and I was selected I showed you that email so this was the email that I got from by use once I was selected okay so and once you are selected they will inform you and they will send you a link uh, where you can apply uh, sorry register for the onboarding process so this is the registration link if you open it they it will have a page like this okay here it is so this is the process this is the same website you have to begin with uh, this thing like apply if you click on apply it will ask you to create an account with this portal just create an account and proceed with the further instructions as uh, shown in this document and everything will be fine don't send any of your documents that uh, this particular attachment will uh, show that you need to submit some documents but the mail says that you do not have to send any documents now from for now the documents will be collected by the HR after your onboarding or offer letter has been given to you. Now the CTC for part time is 20,000 for me and then you will also, I will be getting 8,000 per month as my performance uh, linked incentives. But this 8,000 per month will be given to me only after I complete 12 months with them. So the total earning potential I have is 33,000 per month and that is uh, for part-time jobs if you do a full-time job then you probably would be getting around uh, around 50,000 per month your earning potential will be so but then it's okay you will have uh, I just have to work for four or five hours max and one day will be my week off okay so and the shift timings you can choose from there are available slots where when you are ready to work for them so those are all the, those are the things that uh, the HR will discuss with you when they call you for the con confirmation that you have been selected so let's get back to the slideshow now this is the interview results as I have already showed you that then I I've already shown you that now how I made my demo video I'll going I'm going to give you the uh, attach the demo video at the end of this particular video where you can see how I made the initial demo video okay how I give the demo in the interview is just uh, is something that I'll cover in the second part of the series now I made the demo video uh, you know just seven minutes long borderline six minutes and 59 seconds yeah fluency in English is a must so that's something if you don't have good enough fluency in English then probably I can help you uh, for that you need to watch the third video in this series okay now the use of whiteboards pen tab slides etc are recommended okay it's not just allowed they are recommended so I use those I'm going to show you the okay now the demo video I'm going to attach at the end of this video is actually the intro plus demo video for Vedan 2 because when I submitted the demo for Vedan 2 they asked for the intro part which was missing in the Baiju's demo so what I did is I created an intro uh, clip and attached it and sent the video to Vedan 2 so I'm going to show you that video okay the intro part is not mandatory for Baiju's all right now here is an important message for the students and researchers in science that see the thing is why I'm ma making this video is be because the we already know that if you're a student of science whether it's physics chemistry bio or what is you def probably you are looking for a research position okay but then when you talk about research uh, it could be in academia or it could be in industries so the research and teaching positions in the academia is getting too much competitive and most of you including me might not have the chance to work in academia to do our research so we might have to move to industries because we have to support ourselves financially the most opportunities in the industries would require excellent communication skills well actually even in academia they would need excellent communication skills 
of course you do have to have a subject mastery so that is something given okay but yeah your communication skills must be good okay so if because in the world of competitions the skill sets the communication skill is a must okay now with intellectual work getting online that means most of the intellectual job is getting online so as i said regional and national barriers are bound to reduce in that case communication becomes uh, you know communication is going to be dependent on your english uh, skills because english is going to be the global language for for the age that we are living in okay so you to get better business and job opportunities online where your uh, your market would be expanded globally you need to have good communication skills so please start working on your communication skills and if you need any help then uh, watch the video a uh, third video in this series Namaste Vedans my name is Vibhushit Tripathi I am a passionate researcher and teacher in physics I hold a master's degree in physics I have about 10 years of experience teaching various batches such as JE NEET foundations AP physics 1 2 and C I have also mentored a few students for uh, physics olympiad the unique approach that I always follow while teaching physics is that I try to make the concept of physics as fluid as possible so that when my students Uh, face a difficult problem they won't be real uh, relying on rote memorization rather they would be able to tackle the problem at hand using their intuition and uh, as an example of my teaching style i'm going to provide a demo on the atomic structure which could be served as a refresher for the grade 12 students who are just beginning to start the chapter on atomic structure so here comes the demo video thank you very much Namaste in this brief demonstration we shall discuss some of the core concepts of the atomic theory which will help us understand the structure of an atom better let's begin with the definition of an atom an atom is the smallest electrically neutral unit into which matter can be uniformly resolved the current understanding that we have of the atom is based on the bohr rutherford model a concept that was initially given by rutherford but was corrected by bohr to remove some of the flaws What does that uh, model say? It says that if you consider the atom to be a sphere, at the center there is a positively charged nucleus, which is a very tiny sphere that contains positively charged protons and may contain neutral neutrons. The charge of every proton is 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. But for every proton, there is an electron that contains the exact opposite amount of charge. So for the charge of an electron, it is minus 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb that means if if an atom has z protons it has z electrons and net charge becomes zero take the mass of the proton it is 1.673 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg very small the mass of the neutron is almost the same but a little bit higher than that, that of the proton which is 1.675 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg take the mass of the electron it is very very small which is 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg the ratio between the mass of the proton and the mass of the electron comes out to be 1836.443 you can say that the electron is about 2000 times lighter than that of the proton no wonder that most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in that tiny sphere at the center called the nucleus a better visualization of an atom is where you can see that the circular orbits uh, which are taken by the electrons if you take any specific radius and have all the possible orbits they will describe a shell so what happens is the electronic uh, uh, clouds are actually divided into concentric shells inside the volume of the sphere which we call the atom now If you take the size, then experimentally we know that the radius of the nucleus is about one femtometer, which is 10 to the power minus 15 meter. The radius of an atom is approximately one angstrom, which is 10 to the power minus 10 meter. Do the math, and you will find that the volume of the atom is about 10 to the power 15 times, a quadrillion times more than the volume of the nucleus. So most of the atom the most of the volume of the atom is pretty empty that's why what happened is when rutherford conducted the gold foil experiment this uh, most of the rays simply passed through the tiny thin gold foil only a few 
rebounded and def got deflected because they uh, only a few of those uh, alpha rays came close to the nucleus because there was so much of empty space in the atom most of the alpha rays just went through the gold foil now what does Bohr Rutherford model officially state it says first we'll consider what Rutherford said it said that there is a positively charged center in an atom called the nucleus nearly all the mass of an atom resides in the nucleus the electrons revolve around the nucleus uh, in circular paths the size of the nucleus is very small as compared to the size of the atom the modifications done by Bohr was only sp certain special orbits known as discrete or stationary orbits of electrons are allowed inside an atom the at electron cannot simply take any random orbit with any random radius it has to take a specific orbit which is det determined by the laws of quantum mechanics so those uh, uh, orbits are called stationary orbits or discrete orbits and number two while revolving in discrete orbits the electrons do not radiate or absorb energy so what happens how do they change orbits it's called the transition of orbits only when an electron receives the exact amount of energy to jump to a higher orbit that is if uh, the higher orbit requires one joule of energy and you give it 1.5 joule of energy no difference is made but if you give exactly one joule of energy the electron goes to the higher orbit spends about uh, a billionth of a second then comes back to its original orbit by giving you back the exact one joule of energy in the form of a photon now let's understand how the electrons are arranged in their uh, various orbits. This is given by the bohr beury scheme of electron distribution. The first condition is the nth orbit can accommodate a maximum of 2 n squared number of electrons. The second is the outermost orbit can accommodate only 8 electrons with the exception that the k shell for which n equals to 1 can accommodate a maximum of 2 electrons even if it is the outermost shell. Number three, a shell can begin to accommodate an electron only if all the inner shells are complete. What does that mean? That if there are, this is the nucleus, this is the first orbit, second orbit, third orbit, n equals to 1, n equals to 2, n equals to 3, we can call it k shell, l cell, m shell. k can accommodate how much? 2 n squared. 2 1 squared is 2. Similarly, this can accommodate 2 electrons. L, L is for L2, uh, the N is 2. So, 2 times 2 squared, which is 8. So, L will accommodate 8 electrons. Similarly, N, M will accommodate 18 electrons and then N will accommodate 32 electrons. But, when will N accommodate 32 electrons? only if it is not the outer motion if it is the outer motion it will have eight electrons only at max similarly if m is the outermost shell then instead of 18 it will only accommodate eight electrons and so on however if there is only one shell which is k it will not accommodate eight electrons even if it is the outermost shell it will ac ac accommodate only two electrons now various shells if we arrange them in order of uh, their increasing energy and represent every shell as a horizontal line on this diagram we can uh, we can represent k l m and so on okay and so on we can call this k shell l shell m shell and uh, for this n equals to 1 for this n equals to 2 for this n equals to 3 and uh, similarly the maximum occupancy would be 2 8 18 and so on so this is called an energy level diagram for this video this is all and thank you very much for watching.